Whilst I'm waiting for this to dry, I will do what I was doing, continue last night, which is playing it with my Compact Presario 2232. It has been cleaned up now, to a point. Some amateur tried taking the CD-ROM drive out the wrong way. The buttons are fine. There's a few little scuffs and scrapes on the casing. Uh, the CD drive is a Compaq original unit. Uh, if I remember in my video when I took it apart and stuff, I wasn't sure. I thought it was an aftermarket, but it is a Compaq original. However, it's from probably a year or so down the line or it may have even been available when this computer first came out but it was a much more expensive option because I believe it was a 16 speed CD-ROM drive it's not an actual compact part however it's a uh, but it has a compact sticker so it was sold with a compact unit Oops. Now, what I'm doing, well, I recently watched some videos from YouTube user IBM ThinkPad R51 and he was showing different OS's running on his ThinkPad that he'd got recently, I believe it was. Well, I know a lot of people, I mean myself included, ever since I remember my dad having one of these uh, and I subsequently killed that one I think I've said before which I'm gutted because I've never been able to get another one well technically I have this is as close as I've ever got um, I've decided to try different operating systems on it now this obviously means I'm gonna have all the driver issues and stuff and quite really what's there to say you know what the operating systems are it's just showing the system as it is um, as such video driver has installed but I need SB16.VXD to actually get the express audio sound to work but because I am lazy I'm not going to bother doing that this unit is still running its quantum Bigfoot five and a quarter inch two gigabyte hard drive um, the installation, well let's just have a sort of quick talk. The installation wasn't too bad. System response with it as it is on this version of uh, hardware isn't too sluggish, it's not the best in the world. This unit has 48 meg of RAM installed, two are taken for the graphics card as can be seen there once it focuses and processor power in this one is actually faster than you would believe this is a media GX 200 megahertz equivalent clock however the Cyrix media GX processor is actually seen as a 486 so this is like running a 200 megahertz 486 DX4 that is essentially the equivalent power this thing is so to install Windows ME on here you have to run it with the forward slash NM setup switch which ignores processor type and then it just installs quite happily with the video billboards disabled on setup not making a boot disk and ignoring scan disk, the install took about an hour, which is not too bad, and that's loaded from a copy of WinME that was copied to the hard drive after it was formatted to a fresh FAT32 format. I believe it is loading DXDiag still. I just told it to do it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, the floppy drive, how I went about the boot, because uh, VCam Nower had one of these, YouTube user VCam Nower, uh, an American, he, or was he Canadian? Sorry dude if you see this, I forget with the uh, American or Canadian, 
I think you were Canadian. Um, he had a compact Passari 2200, I can't remember his exact model. And he was trying Windows 98, 98 SE, which were known to not work with these. There was no direct real workaround. However, I believe he found through random chance just mashing some of the keypad buttons actually solved the problem of just this massive screen garble uh, and then you would get your boot menu from the disk setup uh, for CD or boot from hard drive and obviously you choose option 2 to start the CD and then you would get the display just normal and it would install just fine uh, well I didn't I tried booting my actual copied ME disk in this drive didn't want to know uh, but it could see the disc just fine because I used it. Was trying to do an in house upgrade on 95 with it for some reason at first. I don't know why I did that. So, what I actually did was just used a Windows. Ah, there we go. I used a Windows 95 boot disc. And it's from my OSR2 copy, so it has FAT32 support and a CD ROM driver loaded. I formatted. Copied over the hard drive, the disk contents rather, onto the hard drive. Ran the install. Forgot about needing to change the, the compatibility. And there you see, processor 80486, 46 megabyte of RAM. Stop shaking. And. So, yep, I used the boot disk, copied them over, ran the installation, put the setup switch, and just left it to it. Now, I did find a copy ages ago at the actual Cyrix Media GX Windows 95 uh, sound and video drivers, which is why I actually have decent resolution now because it had no spot at all. So, this is running a Windows 95 driver, as can be seen, we have 2 meg of RAM currently running at 8x600. I can run it higher but it is slower and there is no Direct 3D support. Uh, there is Direct 3D with software rendering which is what we're seeing here in scary slow-mo dust all over the camera so yep the system here I uh, I had no problems at all to install using a Windows 95 disk and uh, running from the hard drive not a problem except like I say the setup switch which I forgot at first to ignore processor type took about an hour and the system is here not much more else can be said and waffling on a bit but uh, no sound as such because I need that one VXD file which I cannot be wholly bothered to look for. Uh, general response is about the same. It's actually... It's about no different really than running Windows 95. I would have to say. Uh, especially 95C. If you run... 95B, it's or even 95A or original 95, it is pretty fast. But that's again because it's essentially a 486 just on steroids. Uh, if I changed off, for example, System Restore in troubleshooting, it would probably boot a bit quicker. Who knows? Although I don't have any hopes for that. Uh, plans for which operating systems? Well, I do plan maybe to, now I've done Windows ME, I might actually start with a proper MS-DOS 6 uh, and a Win 3.1, Win 3.11 on it, just for the heck. Windows 95 works just fine so there really wouldn't be any need to show that running uh, I believe you would have seen them anyway in the previous video of it running this doesn't feel any much faster 
Uh, Windows NT, I will probably try all the NT 3.1, 3.5, 3.5.1 3.5.1 and 4, rather. Then I will try 2000 and then see if I can go any further there. Uh, to install XP on here, I believe it is a minimum of 64 meg of RAM on XP and it does throw that loop up at you. Although I believe there is a way to ignore that. Uh, I forget which now, it's been a while since I've, I've done it on a XP on a system with at least less than a 128 mega RAM. <sighs> My shelf's getting very dusty. Uh, video performance in ME is pretty crap, <laughs> which is understandable, uh, essentially for a 486. What I may do though is install Wintune 2.0 when I have Windows 3.1 with MS-DOS on it and see what scores I get and compare them against the 486 which is sat down there. I've never been able to get that 486 feeling like it should do. And the Scorpio, which is sat there also, and the HP, haven't been used for a little while. I've been tinkering and doing model kits. Eat the odd good bit of frame rate. Oops. Until you do something dumb like that and kill it. Uh, I believe full screen is a little bit too taxing for it, however. Now, if this was an MPEG 1 video, it would actually play just fine. This does have support for hardware MPEG decoding on the Cyrix graphics chip, which for 96 97 time would be considered quite normal by then. Still a good thing to have but coming along to be the norm as MPEG decoder cards had been quite well common for some time in the 486 world. So for now that is the Compact Presario 2200 series model 2232 running Windows Millennium soon to be replaced and worked up chronologically showing the other operating systems. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube blog and any questions please ask, loop me third out.